Hi, I'm Kim. You're watching Kim Wilson TV. My channel is dedicated to helping victims of narcissistic abuse get free and stay free. Now, over and over again, doesn't matter what channel you go to, I mean, even if you go to Vaknin or Tudor's channel, they're going to say the same thing. you got to get out. Like, you absolutely have to get out. And if you are out, you have to stay out. So what's that like once you get out? I want to talk about that today. Now, of course, initially, once I had absolutely made up my mind that I was out of there, I was leaving, there was no other option. I was so focused and so locked on to planning my exit strategy, executing uh, that exit strategy and getting free that I really wasn't thinking about anything else. Now, of course, once I did get free, and that was about nine months ago, I had returned to my home, um, which is in southern Saskatchewan. I'd lived here with my family for uh, many years, but for the last five years, my house had been rented out to a very bad renter, and basically my house was in absolute ruins. So once I got here, I had a double burden. I was moving, and the house needed major cleanup and major renovation. So I was very, very busy and very focused on that. Now, once that all kind of dissipated and settled down, and I'm sitting here, feeling absolutely elated, almost like this pink bubble high, like, wow, you know, I got out of there, I got my home, I'm free, I, I made it, like, I actually felt like I had escaped <laughs> the deepest, darkest pit of hell I, I could have ever imagined, so I was definitely in a euphoric state of <sighs> pink bubble. Now, the pink bubble state, uh, it's kind of great in its moment, but I will tell you that bubble pops. Absolutely, it does. The bubble bursts, and there you are, sitting in this reality. Though you don't know what the reality is, you know that you are an absolute mess. Mentally, emotionally, physically, spiritually, financially, I mean, all of it, all of it. You're in an absolute state of terror. I was. I Once that pink bubble burst, I was absolutely panic-stricken, thinking, now what? Now I'm getting all this cognitive dissonance, all this crazy thinking, like, Jesus, was he really that bad? Maybe I shouldn't have left. What was I thinking? Like, maybe it was me. Maybe I was the problem. Maybe I really didn't know how to love him right. Maybe I should have just kept trying harder and trying harder. So there's all this crazy stuff going on in my head, not to mention the fact I was feeling really bad after the pink bubble burst. So I had really, really isolated. Uh, I really put myself into uh, a very dire state of self-imposed isolation. Now, the reality is you've got to get out. You absolutely have to get out. It doesn't matter if your narc is male or female, if you are involved in a gay or straight relationship. None of that matters. The reality is this thing is evil. It is hell-bent on destroying you, and you have to get out. Now, I think... For me, there was kind of this m misconception, maybe this lack of understanding. So I was so focused on getting out, I really hadn't prepared myself in any way for what that fallout would look like, what that aftermath would be. I think initially uh, I thought getting free meant I was going to be free. Well, it took me from one form of servitude and enslavement to another form of servitude and enslavement. And a lot of that had to do with the fact I really had no idea what the fuck just happened in my life. I mean, my life... There was not one aspect of my life that was absolute that wasn't absolutely toppled. I, I was in quite a state. So that pink bubble bursting created a whole different level of confusion, sadness, heartache. I, I, it was terrible initially. I will say that. So if you are still with the narcissist and planning to leave or you just got free, I just want to give you a heads up. It's not going to be a smooth ride in the beginning. It really isn't. Now, of course, I had been blamed, gaslit, name-called, 
shamed, humiliated, you know, from all the infidelity, all the name calling, all the gaslighting. So I guess before I'd left uh, or decided I was leaving, I was in this constant state, almost a state of emergency, like 911 emergency, where I had to fix the problem. I had to be better. I had to love him better. I had to be more understanding. It was all about fixing him, fixing the relationship. So I went from having this tremendous drive, like I was driven to fix this because, of course, I didn't want to be the failure in the relationship. So I was on overdrive trying to fix it. Well, when all of that stops and you get away and you've been isolated and your finances are in shambles, your career is a mess, you know, you've just moved, relocated possibly, given up all your friends or haven't had any for a long time as a result of the narcs uh, isolation. I'm telling you, it, it was a rough ride for me. It really was. And worth it absolutely absolutely worth it but you fall into this horrible black hole with the narcissist you kind of pop out of the black hole and think oh good i'm free but after the pink bubble bursts you kind of find yourself back in a different type of hole uh wondering confused uh disorientated i had physical pain uh, i still had the nosebleeds at the time i was pretty shaky but nine months later i will say Oh my God, it's, it's like a whole different reality now. I have a whole different level of understanding. I've absolutely come to realize I did my best in that relationship. I went above and beyond the call of duty in that relationship. And no, none of that was my fault. So just coming to understand that has been tremendously helpful. I guess the point of this video is I don't want anyone to build your exit strategy, execute your exit strategy, get free, get in that pink bubble state, then have that pink bubble burst on you. Next thing you know, you're breaking no contact or you're not going no contact. You're falling victim to hoovering because I think that all of that is part of an ongoing trap. You get out, you think it's going to be great. Well, yeah, it's it's better. But on the other hand, there's a whole different black hole there. So I think our best weapon of defense, our best form of resistance to getting sucked back in is a really realistic understanding of how you may feel once that pink bubble bursts. I'll tell you, there were times when I first realized the pink bubble had burst and that I had been in a pink bubble. There were times I considered breaking no contact. There were times I considered reaching out to him. Fortunately, I was able to reel that really bad thinking back in. But I've seen over and over again that many people uh, weren't really aware that there's going to be another pitfall beyond getting free, beyond the pink bubble. And I just hope that this video will give you a bit of strength and a bit of understanding that it's not going to be an easy ride. And maybe you're going to have to white knuckle it, but if you can just hang on, just stay no contact, just fight through that sort of second hurdle that we have to get through, I know you're going to make it. I'm making it, and I know I'm never going back to that shit. So I just, I just want to warn you that there is another trap ahead. Now, many friends here at this channel, at our channel, have managed to white knuckle it through that next hurdle. So if you are feeling volatile, if you are feeling like breaking no contact, if some cognitive dissonance and post-traumatic stress disorder is creeping up on you as a result of that pink bubble bursting, please reach out. Please reach out here because we want to help you. This is a trap. And if you just stay focused, keep white knuckling it, fake it till you make it, you'll get past this. I promise you will. I'm Kim. You're watching Kim Wilson TV. I hope you guys are having a great NARC-free day. Peace be with you, my friends.